Humans respond to stress, loss, and adversity in a variety of ways. Many of us have experienced low moods or spirits when faced with difficulty or loss. We may lose our sleep and appetite and may not feel like socializing or meeting people. This change in behavior is a normal human reaction to a stressful situation, as long as the state is transient and goes away in a couple of days. But if symptoms such as low mood, hopelessness, changes in appetite, sleep patterns, loss of interest in hobbies, or anhedonia, feelings of guilt persist for more than two weeks and negatively affect our social, domestic, and occupational functioning, then it is no more a normal reaction but a pathological one. It may merit a concern for clinical depression. Major depression is extremely common among various societies and, despite being a treatable illness, goes largely undiagnosed due to its insidious nature and the stigma attached to its diagnosis and seeking treatment. Case for urgency. According to the Global Burden of Disease Study, Depressive disorder is the third leading cause of the years lived with disability, or YLDs, globally. YLD can be described as years lived in less than ideal health. The economic burden of major depressive disorder is tremendous. As much as 326 billion US dollars are spent in the year 2018 in the US alone, severe forms of clinical depression often translate into suicides. According to a report published in 2019, every 40 seconds a person commits suicide. For every person who commits suicide, there are 20 people who attempt to end their lives. The statistics are particularly more worrying for women as they have almost twice a higher prevalence to experience depression compared to men. One of the main reasons is because there are occasional hormonal changes. The drastic change in women's hormone levels can be the precursor for depression. This includes premenstrual dysphoric disorder, or PMDD, a type of depression women experience before entering their period, prenatal and postpartum depression, the depression that happens during pregnancy and after giving birth, perimenopausal depression. This kind of depression happens when a woman is transitioning into menopause. On top of that, as women typically experience puberty earlier than men, they are more likely to develop depression at a younger age. Another thing worth taking note of is the deteriorating mental health of our young adults. Several studies show that between 30 to 40 percent of college students have developed symptoms of depression. Not only do they have to make good grades and other academic achievements, but the students also need to move to a new place and are socially required to get along with new friends. Recent pandemic situations and restrictions and the fear of contagion, which mandated separation from their peers, have been studied to also increase their stress levels. Mental illness at large and major depression, in particular, pose a public health challenge that calls for public health policy institutes and governments to take appropriate steps. Diagnosis, signs and symptoms. On the individual level, major depressive disorder is diagnosed based on a set of nine symptoms formulated in the Diagnostics and Statistical Manual, DSM-5, and their context. Five or more of the nine symptoms, including at least one of depressed mood and loss of interest or pleasure, in the same two-week period, and each of the symptoms represents a change from previous functioning. These symptoms include depressed mood, either subjective or observed, irritability is more common in teenagers, loss of interest or pleasure, change in weight or appetite, insomnia or hypersomnia, observed psychomotor agitation, loss of energy or fatigue, feelings of worthlessness or guilt, impaired concentration or indecisiveness, thoughts of death or suicidal ideation or attempt. If there is depression resulting in significant clinical impairment but not meeting the above criteria for major depression, then it is termed adjustment disorder with depressed mood. This occurs within three months following a stressful life event and does not persist for six months after the termination of the stressor. If depressive symptoms are occurring within two months of the death of a loved one, then it is considered normal grief. If symptoms persist beyond two months, then a diagnosis of major depression needs to be explored. The severity of symptoms in women is notably higher, 
while the irritability level is similar. Women experience more depression with anxiety, eating disorders such as bulimia and psychosomatic disorder, along with interpersonal sensitivity and hypersomnia. Women also are more likely to attempt suicide. On the other hand, men experience more alcohol and substance abuse, and more suicidal ideation with fewer attempts. Severity Major depression can be mild, moderate, or severe. In mild depression, despite the symptoms, functioning would still be preserved. In moderate depressive illness, the different facets of functioning would be markedly impaired. Whereas in severe major depressive disorder, one may experience and act on suicidal thoughts. In very severe forms, one may even experience hallucinations and delusions accompanying the mood symptoms, which is termed major depression with psychotic features. Etiology The several predisposing factors that contribute to major depression can be broken up into three categories – biological, psychological and social factors. Biologically, genes, neurons and hormones are factors that likely play a role in causing depression. The imbalance in serotonin hormone due to the presence of mutation in serotonin transporter gene 5-HTT may underlie psychiatric disorders. Psychological causes include childhood trauma, such as parental loss, poor parenting, parental drinking, and family violence. Social causes include bullying, criminally assaulted, and stressful working environments. The differential diagnosis of depression includes endocrinopathies, thyroid and adrenal disorders, nutritional deficiencies, vitamin D and B12, and neurological cases, epilepsy and Alzheimer. Treatment Major depressive disorder, like all psychiatric illnesses, is treated using the biopsychosocial model of care. A wide range of depression treatment, including mindfulness exercise, psychotherapy and antidepressant medication. In some cases, patients who had acute response to antidepressant medication continue their treatment with electroconvulsive therapy ECT. ECT is the most effective and commonly acute treatment for severe major depression where medical professionals pass high doses of electricity through the brain. A questionnaire will determine what stage of depression you are in and the correct treatment for you. Drugs Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, for example, citalopram, are usually first line used to alter the serotonin normal mechanism, where after carrying a message, serotonin are usually reabsorbed by serotonin transporter. These medications work by inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin and increasing the serotonin level. Possible side effects related to SSRIs include diarrhea, headache, weight gain, and reduced sexual desire. Tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs, are usually second line, including imipramine and clomipramine. Common side effects are dry mouth, constipation, and can induce a cardiac arrhythmia in susceptible patients. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs, include phenelzine and tranylcypromine, are used for those who have not responded to other classes of medications. They are less frequently used due to their life-threatening drug and food interactions. Other side effects include sedation, weight gain, and orthostatic hypertension. Atypical antidepressants, including bupropion, mirtazapine, and venlafaxine, are newer drugs in the market and are as effective as SSRIs and have lesser side effects compared to TCAs and MAO inhibitors. Duration of treatment Antidepressants take two weeks to start their effects and are indicated for nine months after a response is observed. There is a 40% remission rate with an adequate single trial with an antidepressant. The majority of the rest of the patients show some improvement. Common failure medications are more frequently due to inadequate dose and duration or human error factors. Magic mushroom is a trivial name for a group of fungi that contains psilocybin a substance that causes the consumer to hallucinate, either visually or auditorily. Its uses are limited as recreational drugs in several parts of the world where it is allowed. However, the mushroom also has a hidden benefit. In a research study, it is shown that the substance psilocybin, in addition to having a similar effect to escitalopram, 
An established medication to relieve moderate to severe depression also works better on patients with treatment-resistant depression. These patients have already been unsuccessfully treated with at least two medications prior to consuming the mushroom. Both psilocybin and escitalopram alter the connection of neurons inside the brain, but psilocybin works on a different serotonin receptor and is also reported to produce lower side effects. Bigger samples are needed to validate the results, but these are promising nonetheless, as there are around 30% of cases of depression that are not responsive anymore to the current treatment. So, the next time you find a magic mushroom during your forage quests, or just like trekking through the woods, say thanks to it for giving hope to increased happiness index for us humans.